world's first four-ton battery electric planes. 505 mile range on a 30 minute charge. It's small. It's uh, not, you know, about, I think it's about nine passengers. Aviation has orders for $5 billion worth of these aircraft. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. I'm here today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going today, Bill? Hey, it's going well. Thank you very much. Hey, right, Bill. We, we occasionally talk about boats. We sometimes talk about trains. But today, we're going to talk about the world's first four-ton battery electric planes. And I'm assuming it's a four-ton battery, not a four-ton plane, because planes are heavy to start with. Yeah, it's a battery. Yeah. Yeah. To fly in the United States, 505-mile range on a 30-minute charge. That's a big charger. I assume this is one of those 800-volt chargers, or maybe it's even more extreme than that. Eviation aircraft. Eviation. Eviation. Based there in the northern Seattle area, uh, Arlington, Washington, which is north of north of Everett. The company was originally originally based in Israel. Mm-hmm. The airplane looked pretty much different. It had a butterfly tail, and it had the engines were mounted out on the uh, on the wing tips. And then once it got moved here to the United States, and they set up operations in uh, up in Arlington, which of course Puts them within spitting distance of Boeing and Everett. Yeah, this is an interesting design with the turboprop. Well, I don't know if it's turboprop, but with the propellers at the back. Those are electric motors. So, yeah, this airplane's gone through some evolution. Uh, they're doing their flight tests over in uh, uh, in Moses Lake, which means they have to. I don't know if they've done it yet, but they've flown around Moses Lake and they've had, you know, their first flights and test flights and things. I don't know whether or not they've actually flown it from Moses Lake back over to Everett. Uh, well, well, not Everett, but to, to Arlington. Arlington, formerly, there's a nice, really big airfield there down in the plateau area of Arlington that used to be a naval air station. That's where they train naval pilots to fly out of carriers and things like that. So there's a nice airport facility there for doing this. And, of course, just a hop, skip, and a jump down to Everett where you've got all kinds of uh, facilities that are attached and working with, you know, and, and suppliers to, to Boeing. And then, of course, you got, they do the assembly of Boeing aircraft there. And so that's a great area. If you're doing aircraft, advanced technical aircraft development, that's that's where you want to be. So I could see why they moved it from Israel over there. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's an exciting airplane. Has a not, it, it's small. It's uh, not, you know, about, I think it's about nine passengers. Something like that, five hundred miles range. That's uh, that's not that's not shabby. It'd be uh, good for. I was gonna say this looks like it's probably two pilots, ten passengers. Yeah, that's what it is. This is called the Alice. Now, a South Florida company that's trying to do end-to-end zero emission transportation is called Urban Link, and so they've placed an order for ten of these, and uh, apparently. Aviation has orders for $5 billion worth of these aircraft. Now, my question that comes in here is like we just had the guy has a billion dollars of orders over 20 years for motorcycles. Um, is can they deliver? Like in my case of the motorcycle guy, I know he can do that. I know he has the financial wherewithal to make that happen. Okay. And so his company can make that happen. Does Aviation have the capability to deliver on five billion dollars worth of manufacturing so we see this in the car space we, we look at how big you know some of these companies like aptera we keep waiting for aptera to start delivering cars you know or whatever you call their vehicles but you know that's my question here yeah i don't i mean obviously like i said you've got this they're right in the heart of Boeing country you know it there you got the workers you got the train you know people to do this financially yeah that's the question yeah, they've they've gone. They've changed uh, the CTO or the C- CEO has changed. I guess we'll have to see. So here's a little bit of stats on the Alice aircraft. It's 57 feet long. Of course, it has 8,000 pounds of battery. 4,000. 4,000 pounds of battery. No, four. No, it's 8,000 pounds. It's four tons. Four tons. 8,000 pounds. Oh, I see. Okay, I see. Yes, you're right. Sorry. And it is only nine passengers. Nine passengers, two pilots. But the fact that it can charge in 30 minutes is pretty incredible. It has a range of 440 nautical miles, which is about 550 miles. Yeah. has a max cruising speed of 250 knots, which is about 287 miles per hour, which is about half the speed of a Boeing 737. 
eventually they hope to be able to make a version that can halt anywhere from 20 to 40 passengers, which is kind of a typical commuter aircraft. I don't like commuter aircraft. They tend to be too small for somebody of my size. Uh, unless it's like less than a 60 minute flight. I, I see this air, you know, that if Urban Lake probably is looking at passenger service, uh, there is a, a some images out there of this aircraft being in DHL color, colors. Uh, so this aircraft, you know, uh, is, is really ideally suited for doing kind of package movement. So typically you can be here in, uh, you know, like where I live. Uh, on the flight flight path of a lot of these aircraft, uh, in the you know early in the morning or late in the evening, you've got these uh, aircraft from uh, you know FedEx or DHL or whoever the package service is that's coming in. And they're flying to Epley, which is our main airport, to deliver packages to the FedEx center or wherever, you know, to get distributed from there. So these are this would be ideal for that because you're talking maybe 100, 200 miles, while well, you know. 300 miles at most uh, flight range, and it'll come in here, it'll drop the packages off. It can sit overnight, be recharged. It's ideal for that. And fuel costs, particularly here in Nebraska, we're at what? We're at, uh, what, 12 cents a kilowatt hour or something like that, um, cheapest in the country. This would be perfect for, for a DHL type, FedEx, even Amazon, I guess, well, for those types of operations. Yeah, Andre Stein is the current CEO of Aviation, and he's been there since last year. He's only been there eleven months. Right? Yeah, because they they changed recently. So I mean, I've reached out to to them because I like I said I go out there twice a year and I keep wanting to to you know get get together with them and do a tour, but we just never seem to be able to connect. So hey, guys, if you're listening, I'm coming out there next month for Thanksgiving. Let's set up a tie. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.